Okay, this video is for section 4.8. <laughs> we are going to start talking about antiderivatives. Um, so we are now just got through all of these derivatives and different derivative rules, and I am going to reverse it on you. Ugh. We are going to go backwards now. An antiderivative is when you have a derivative and you need to find the original function. Let's jump to the PowerPoint here. There we go. Okay. Antiderivatives 4.8. So if f, capital F, is an antiderivative of some function lowercase f on some interval i, then the most general antiderivative of f on this interval is the antiderivative capital F of X plus a constant. Now that constant is going to always be C. It is never going to be a number. And the reason is because recall, if we take a derivative of a function that has a constant, that derivative is zero, which means when we look at the derivative, what happens is we don't know if there was a constant tacked on to the end of the original function. There's no way to know because the derivative went to zero and we have nothing to look at to derive um, what was that original number. So we just write C to represent any constant that could be actually on the function um, and affect a lot of the interpretations and applications. So the function x squared, we would see that the general antiderivative is as follows. Now, how did we get that? Well, let's start with the function and let me show you how it works. Okay, so we're saying that the function is x cubed over three. That's where we essentially started. So they're saying the function we started with was x cubed over three. And then when we went to take the derivative of this function, we, let's rewrite this first. This function is one third x squared is the same thing, making it easier for us to see that we take the three, we multiply it down here. Technically that's three over one. We'll see that that cancels to a one. Come back up and subtract one. So the derivative is x squared. So what we did was we said, hey, the antiderivative, the der oh, sorry, the derivative, not the antiderivative, the derivative is x squared. Go ahead and find the original function. So we just have to look at what we did here and undo what it is that we just did. So instead of going in this counterclockwise direction, we are actually going to switch up gears and go in a clockwise direction. So since we subtracted one to get the derivative, we are going to want to add one to get the antiderivative. And since there was a multiplication happening here, we are going to want to take this number and divide. So add and divide is for antiderivatives. Multiply and subtract is for derivatives. I know, throwing a lot at you. So if you look at this, you'll have x cubed, and that 3 comes down and gets divided and gives us the original function. Now, the only thing that we have to tack on is this plus C because we have no idea if the original function was X cubed over three plus eight, where the eight would have disappeared and the derivative became zero. So we have to account for an unknown constant. And C might be zero. In this case, C is actually zero, but there is no way to know that if we just start here. Okay, so that's what the slide is saying. Where did my PowerPoint go? Okay, so by assigning specific values to the constant c, we obtain a family of functions whose graph are vertical translations of one another. Remember that c is just the y-intercept, so essentially what we're doing is we're finding the family of curves that explain that derivative that we started with and say that any one of these could work for that derivative, and it would really depend on our initial value would have to be given in order for us to find c exactly for a particular function. Let's try these. So I'm gonna jump back to our whiteboard and we're gonna do these together. 
Okay, so the very first one that we want to try, it says f of x is equal to sine of x. And we want to, actually this is f prime of x because we are taking the antiderivative. So to go back to the original function, we have to think what function, when we took the derivative, we got sine. Okay, well the derivative of sine is cosine. Well, that doesn't work. But the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So since this is positive, it means the original function was negative cosine of x. Okay, so if we go backwards, which I strongly advise as being the way to make sure that you got the right antiderivative, if we take the derivative of negative cosine, okay, we go to take the derivative of negative cosine, you guys would have said, well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And there is a negative sign here in front, so that stays there. Negative, negative sign is a positive sign of x. Okay, we have the same things. We're good to go. The next example, B, is the derivative is given as the function 1 over x. So this one we have to remember when it's 1 over x or same thing as x to the negative one. If you try to do a power rule, you add one and divide for the derivative. So this, this can happen all the time because you might forget this one. This is that special case. But if we tried to add one to the derivative and then divide, we would get negative one plus one gives us x to the zero power. And then we're trying to divide by zero and we'd be like, uh, that's undefined problem. When that happens, that needs to hint to you that this is that special case that is not a power rule. It's the only one that's not a power rule because x is raised to the first power down here. If it's second, third, anything other than a one, you do that power rule. You bring it up to a negative exponent and you add one and divide. But when we have one over x to the first power, the antiderivative of that, the original function was ln of x. Now, there is a change though, when we're going backwards, it's not parentheses here. We do need to put absolute values here, plus C. Okay, these need to be absolute values. Absolute value bars. Now, if you recall from algebra, absolute value bars say that anything you put inside those absolute value bars need to be positive. And why is that the case? Because the natural log function ln does not exist is negative it would be undefined so we need to make sure whatever values of x is going in there for this application it needs to be a positive value and then there may or may not have been some constant at the end the next example we'll see is when the derivative is equal to generically x to the nth power where where x is not equal to negative one. Remember, if x is equal to negative one, that is that special case, that is the natural log function. So in order to get back to the original function, this is the rule for antiderivatives of power rules. We add one to the exponent, and then we divide by that exponent. So we get the original function x to the n plus one divided by n plus one for any value of n other than negative one. So this is your antiderivative for the power rule. One more example to do together. If we know the derivative, and this is example part D. That's one too many times. Part D says that the derivative is the function one half plus three fourths x squared. And minus four thirds x cubed was the last example in the PowerPoint to do. Okay, so Following our power rule, 
here, the x is raised to the zero power, meaning a one. This is one half x to the zero power. So we need to add one to that, which gives us the x, and divide by one, which does nothing. So we have the original function, first term, is one half x plus. Okay, so now we add one to two to get three and divide by three. So that gives us three fourths divided by three over one. If we flip and multiply, we get three fourths times one third. Okay, dividing by fractions. Threes cancel and we get a fourth. So we're ending up with one fourth x squared. Oh, cubed, sorry, that's cubed. Plus one. One fourth x cubed minus minus from here, minus, let me get this out of the way, so it's not all cluttery. Okay, now we are looking at this last term. Again, we are going to add one to the three to get a four, and divide by four, so that gives us four thirds divided by four over one. Bring that up and multiply, four thirds times one over four, which gives us one third, so our last term is one third x, and we had a three plus one on the exponent to the fourth. All right, that is our original function by using that power rule. Add one to the exponent and divide. Ooh, I'm missing something. In class, I hope you guys would have said plus c. You need that plus c to account for any, um, any constants that were originally in the function that when we took the derivative, it went to zero. Okay, so if we head back to the PowerPoint, I just want to show you one more slide in this section, and that would be the generic equations. Notice that if we have um, a constant in front of a derivative or in front of a function, that constant is appearing in the antiderivative as well. Um, if we are adding two functions, then you are, can take the derivative of the term separately or the antiderivative of the term separately, and we just did that in the last example. The general rule for the power rule, which we also derived and did ourselves, the antiderivative of 1 over x will always be the natural log. The antiderivative of e to the x we should know is e to the x because the derivative of e to the x is itself. And we talked about the sines and the cosines. And here are some, again, these are just some examples of antiderivatives where here's the derivative, here's the original function when we took the antiderivative. Okay. End this show. Let's head. All right. So that is, that is. Oh, what section? 4.8, our last section in chapter 4, before we enter chapter 5 next week. And chapter 5 talks about a bunch of antiderivatives and goes beyond into integrals and gets you ready for the beginning of Calc 2. All right, if you guys have questions, reach out to me. You can always set up a chat if my email solutions do not make sense to you, no problem. Um, just keep communication open. Okay, remember I am behind on grading, so your exams and stuff aren't in there yet. I am working on that, I promise, promise. Um, once I get caught up, my grading will be much faster. Um, but this, this, I had a, quite a bit come at me all at once with this changeover. All right, I hope you guys are staying safe. I'll see you next week.